All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Extinct, the podcast. This is, I believe, episode officially number four. We got an exciting one today, folks. Today with us is our, well, first of all, let me uh, introduce my beautiful co-host. We got Mr. Damien Bravo somewhere back there from uh, Bigfoot Evidence, the blog spot, uh, Sean Evidence. He's, he's chiming in via voice call. And the ever charismatic, ever popular Mr. Michael Merchant, the head honcho of our little organization we like to call Team Taser Bigfoot. And our special guest today is the inf most infamous man in Bigfootery. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Mr. Voodoo Six. Voodoo, what's happening? Woohoo! Not too much. What's up, Voodoo? <laughs> nice to have you, man. How's everybody doing tonight? Doing good. good. Doing good. Awesome. All right. So. We are going to start today's uh, topic of discussion with a little thing that I've been talking about with the guys here, and I know that you have, a, judging by your videos, you've got a lot of opinion on this. Everybody I've been talking to in the last couple of weeks, last thing I ask them, what is your opinion, opinion of Patterson Gimlin? And I'm going to start with you, Mr. Voodoo. Anybody feel free to chime in at any point. Uh, my opinion of the Patterson Gimlin film or them themselves. <laughs> the Patterson Gimlin uh, the film, film, do you think, is it, it real? It's, it's one of them things where you know, it's, it'll probably never be known whether it's real or not, even though we do have somebody now that claims to have the suit. Um, but I, as I was talking to Michael earlier, it's one of these things where I have to make a list of pros and cons for and against this film. And when I weigh the cons against the pros, it's just a landslide, you know, leaning towards this being a hoax. That's just my opinion. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had my that's, microphone uh, up. Well, wow, that's uh, you hear the silence in the room. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I come them already. It's over. That's right. a death, that's that's a gross a lip silence, but I have to. I have to manually yeah. turn my microphone on and off because there's a lot going on over here today. Um, uh. So my apologies. Um, what is the most compelling piece of evidence that leads you to say hoax, um, Mr. Voodoo? Uh, just the circumstances surrounding the film. You, we can look at the film all day long and try to glean any information we can from it. And I've made the comparison to the Snow Walker Yeti film. Uh, Meldrum and all them guys were convinced this thing was a real Yeti that they had on film until they started examining the circumstances surrounding the film, and it quickly fell apart, and they realized that they had been hoaxed, even though they couldn't debunk it from looking at the film itself. Same goes for the Patterson-Gimlin film. It don't matter what we're seeing on the screen. If the circumstances around the film you know, are the same thing and they're leading me towards hoax, I have to lean towards hoax. I personally... But Voodoo, I wouldn't, I wouldn't compare... I, I mean, you and I have talked a lot about the Patterson video, and when I saw the... whatever that was, the Snow Walker footage, uh, I wasn't convinced that that... I mean, that thing was floundering around in the snow. There was like, you know, the beginning of the film, with is this, it's in the snow field, and then there's like no end to the film. It's like the film just stops and the thing's still floundering around. The, at least with the Patterson footage, you know, there's a reasonable uh, storyline there that, you know, they stumble upon this thing and the horse rears up and they get this footage and then the thing wanders off into the into the pucker brush. It's got like a, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end. You know, the the, the, the Snow Walker was just the middle. <laughs> it was like no beginning. Even end the there. story that goes along with the film le leads me to think hoax. The Patterson or the Snow Walker? Patterson film. Hmm. I mean, we can't find this thing in the woods. It's walking around stealthy, sneaking all over the place, and two cowboys are going to ride up to it on horses, dragging a pack horse, and it's, they're going to find it. And nobody's found one in 45 years since, or what, 44 years since? Uh, I know, it's, know. it's perplexing. I mean, it's just well, it's preposterous almost. Well, well, what people were saying, also, we've got to keep in mind that when uh, the Gimli uh, film was filmed, uh, it so happened that in that area it got washed out because of a flood. So uh, the you know some theory uh, people believe that the reason why Patty was there was because it, there was a, a food source available to her or water, or water whatever reason it was doing there it was something that normally they wouldn't do it just the situation uh, gave to that well others believe that you know uh, Bigfoot wants to show itself uh, you know and uh, prove to the, you know for whatever reason they, they, there's some people that believe that a Bigfoot uh, it's intelligent, 
and wanted to show the world that it does exist. Uh, well, you know, whether I believe that, that is true or not, but the interesting part is that part of the flood, I, you know, uh, a lot of people don't look into, you know, don't, don't think about that. You know, uh, it, 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 it was washed out. It was a sand bed. Uh, a lot of things could have been there available. It attracted it. Maybe we got attracted to there. Now, if it's real or not, uh, naturally, we, you know, we, the, the discussion has been done, been going on for, uh, the same time as my birth. I mean, of my age, I'm 44 years old. And, uh, actually that film was done right the month after I was born. Uh, but Damien, so, Damien, mm -hmm. even if, I mean, I mean, he's what voodoo, I mean, you're kind of, it's kind of like two separate things. You're talking about whether it's a suit and then you're saying, well, if it's a real animal, that could be a possible uh, behavior that was changed by the flood. I mean, the thing is, it, you know, voodoo talks to me. When I talk to voodoo, I start thinking it's a person in a suit for the simple reason that if I was to apply hard science to it, the most reasonable explanation would be somebody in a suit. And I just got done telling uh, voodoo earlier, I don't trust that I have enough I can't be objective about that anymore. I'm kind of emotionally attached uh -huh. to that film. I look at that and I go, wow, that looks really real to me. And so when people present, you know, when Buddha says, well, there's this backstory to it, I question whether the backstory is real. But the bottom line is whether or not that footage is real or not, If it, even if it was falsified and proven to be a fake, I, I still think there's a lot of evidence out there to support the existence of just something out there in the woods. So th that wouldn't be the end yeah, for I me. Don't I don't think that you know the, a verdict on the Patterson Gimlin film one way or the other proves or right. disproves you know the existence of Bigfoot. And just to clear the air, I really wish it was true. I'm not here to just be <laughs> I, know you do. I mean, a lot of people think I'm just here to just be you know rain on everybody's parade. No, it's you know I would love for this to be true. I want this to be true. But I'm going to look at the evidence. I'm going to look at it hard, just as I would look at anything. You know, if somebody wants me to invest money in something, I'm going to look at the evidence. I'm not just going to take somebody's word for it. That I need to, you know, buy such such and such stocks. I'm going to investigate into it, just like I do anything else. Well, I really appreciate you doing that, Voodoo. And I mean, you and I don't always uh, believe, you know, agree that the same thing. But I have a tremendous amount of respect for your observational skills and your ability to, you know, ferret out that information. No, I try. And, and, and naturally, you know, we, you know, there's all, all kinds of conspiracy theories about the the film and that it was somebody from Hollywood that actually made the suit and, and people then argue that no, that it was, uh, you know, at that time the technology was not available to do it. And I've heard that you said, yeah, that there's, there was uh, certain materials that were available. Uh, could you, yeah, could you, could, let's talk about that. Yeah, I remember that we had that conversation. Yeah. Um, what exactly uh, was the materials that you said were available during that time? Well, they always tell us that like Velcro and spandex and things like that weren't available. Well, they were. They were both of those were invented in the 50s spandex and uh, velcro but they also had things like neoprene you know they made wetsuits they had wetsuits back then pantyhose there's all kinds of stretchable fabric that could be used and they always you know and if you watch monster quest or any of them shows they'll throw it out there you know this these materials weren't available then which is crap they were available then yeah and and, and i know that we were talking about you know uh, i remember when we had when we had the conversation i i pointed out a very particular thing about uh uh, uh, the patty, the you know the female Bigfoot supposedly uh, that well it has breasts, but you know um, that you know when it was walking we could see a definition of the calf, how the calf muscle formed, and we could actually see the splitting of the muscle. The calf muscle, uh, if you look at it, is actually split up by two uh, major muscles. When you take a step, you see the splitting at the bottom of the calf when the step is taken, and that's what you see in patty. And um, we were we were talking about uh, discussing how you know how was it how is it possible that this thing that is, it, it might be human it, it might be a human uh, but it's wearing a suit could could show that definition as it steps I mean uh, well that was one of the points we disagreed on I agree yeah. that I do see the calf flexing I see, I see what appears to be a calf muscle flexing and that's one of the best things in the Passion Gimlin film that I can see. But I don't quite see like the two muscles split and things like that that other people see. Hey, just well, I, well, I want to chime it, in just for a second here. Hey, Sean, how's yes. the feedback on the website? Um, well, we have Billy on, and um, we have a couple of people online, but uh, it's um been really slow here. Okay, and I'm just and I know I can't post any links. So, okay, so I was gonna post some. All right, links, but I can't. just so everyone knows, this is our first night where we're uh, going live with the chat room. And uh, we have Sean Evidence from the Bigfoot Evidence uh, Blogspot monitoring that and taking your questions if anybody has any. Um, no complaints about the, the audio this far. 
Sean, because I know that's nope. been a problem for the last uh, couple of broadcasts, but you'll chime in nope. if you have anything, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, great. All right, guys, <laughs> I'm sorry to disrupt the conversation in the flow. I do want I, I to point out that um, the biggest thing to me is I'm 50-50 on Patterson-Gimlin. The biggest thing to me is where is the suit? That suit was... That suit was was history, and people would sell sell out their own brother for a few grand. And you know, I think it should have popped up by now. That intrigues me. I'm not saying that that's the reason I believe it, because I don't. I don't believe it. I I'm fifty fifty, like I said. But that really lends to the other side of the argument. You know, that's money. Money is the root of all evil. And if you can get anybody to sell you out, it's going to be over money. Why couldn't they just burn the suit? Suppose they could have. I mean, if I was going to hope something like that, and I never wanted this thing to be found, we're already camping. Let's throw it in the camp. Right. I mean, even if, like, uh, this person claims that they know where the suit is and they're going to produce it and all that, even if it is the actual suit used in the film, I highly doubt he has any way to prove it. There are, even if it is the exact one, right. people will not believe right. it. It could be a fake. It might not be. Uh, but it, don't you think someone would have... Like, you know, I know there's that, that tall guy that claimed he was the guy, you know, walking around in the suit, but I think he's got motivation for that. And I would think that if they had hired somebody to get in the suit and paid somebody to make what at the time would have been the best, you know, ape suit. I mean, it was better to me than the stuff that was being put on sci-fi during that time period. There'd be a lot of incentive for the person to make that suit to come forth and go, hey, <laughs> that was my suit because he'd get all kinds of work from it. And I mean, uh, I, w- I, wish I don't know. Did anybody come forth front. and claim that? Just repeat your last part. I said something. I said, did, you know, did anybody come out and claim that? Did like a special effects guy? Did, is there any record of somebody saying I made that suit? Not that I know of. I, I think we can want to brag about that. Yeah, I think we yeah. can all well, agree some, that some that people suit. claim it was a, somebody from uh, I can't remember the name. Wasn't I? For the life of me, hey, Sean, do you remember the name of the guy that supposedly? People were claiming there was a special effects guy for the suit. It was the gentleman who did the suits for Planet of the Ape, but he said he didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, that you know, it's interesting to to uh, you know that Michael mentioned that because you know I, I also think of, think of it that way. You know, if if somebody had something to gain from it, I it's mean, they John would have put Chambers. it out. Huh? John John Chambers. He was a guy that, yeah. like Roy was saying, that did Planet of the Apes, uh, the um, the costume and. For a long time, he never denied that that he didn't have anything to do with the Patterson Gimlin. People assumed that that he was responsible, but he never came out and said, "No, I I wasn't responsible." He just kept that going. It wasn't until later on in the years that he admitted that um, he had nothing to do with it. And um, uh, M.K. Davis, the guy that that did the whole thing about the massacre, the theory, the massacre of Bluff Creek theory, mm-hmm. right. Um, he, he calls it the John the Chambers. The tale they made up. <laughs> what was that? I said the fairy tale they made oh, up. Yeah. You know yeah. where there was a huge yeah. massacre. It reads like something out of Scarface with a cocaine deal gone bad. <laughs> yeah. I don't need any solid evidence to say that that is friend. just BS. BS, yeah. But you can't prove it's not. Yeah, yeah, man, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's real, man. Hey, that's not real, man. I see, I see blood in that picture, guys. Well, I mean, it's even that big lump and. Patty's thigh. They claim as a gunshot wound. <laughs> well, well, I think I think blood was was very well made even back in the old days. It looked like blood. So, <laughs> if you want to think about it, but you know, well, it, Voodoo, it, you it got a lot of. I'm sorry, Damien. No, go ahead. Well, Voodoo, you got a, you got a quite a bit of attention when you did the, and I thought it was brilliant. You utilized, you know, something very simple, the size of her foot to determine the height of the thing. I'm I'm kind of curious about that and. And and while I agree with you that the most reasonable explanation is a guy in the suit, uh, I'm kind of curious as to how you feel about, you know, the mid tarsal break, because not only do we have footage of the, you know, the critter or the or the person in the suit <laughs> walking away, we also have the photographs and castings of the footprints that supposedly were left by the great creature. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you are. Um, <laughs> well, for one, we know that if someone's wearing an oversized, flexible, prosthetic rubber foot on their foot, they will leave a print that looks like a mid-tarsal break. Yeah, but they kick out at the end. They don't have that. I mean, it, somebody depends on how, that? it depends on how stiff it is. 
what it's made of. We, we need to know the composition of the foot. Well, you know, how dense is the latex and things like that. We See, can actually seen, replicate it. I've seen video people doing that, but the problem I have is they'll have that rubber, and it kind of superficially looks like a mid-tarsal break because you're right, they're putting the weight you know, in a different spot, but when they go to leave, instead of having a crisp implant, it kicks back sand. And, so, right. and when you look at the Patterson prints, it's pretty crisp. Those footprints, those toes look good. Right. And remember you said that in a minute, because I'm going to bring up another point on that. That footprint you're talking about is made out of plastic, not rubber. All right. So now talk about a softer material doing that, and it's not going to kick up the sand like we, like we saw in the plastic print. Uh, what was the other thing I was just getting ready to say? I said, remember you said that. Oh, the, 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 the length of the... Oh, what did I say? Damn, I forgot. <laughs> we, need a, we need a rewind until they can see it. Go to the chat room. <laughs> I lost my train. Yeah, well, what did we just say? Yeah. I'd have to see a videotape of somebody... I mean, the videotapes that I've seen of people making that argument of the mid tarsal oh. break being made by clown shoes, uh, I haven't seen any of them that look like the Patterson. Well, that's why I'm going to be working on that myself. Because it's only it's in the test phase. We just somebody just figured that out, right. and it goes right along. I, the piece. I have a question. Saying, yes, go ahead. Um, you know that's a stride. That's a difference. That's a huge stride in there. How do you how do you make just huge strides? Even if you have the clown shoes, how would you? I actually it? haven't. I actually haven't tried measuring that. I have a pretty good stride anyway. Um, when I was in the military, I used to do uh, pace, which mm -hmm. meant my job when we were navigating was to keep track of how far we went. And so my stride equals so much. Um, and I had a little bit bigger stride than everybody else, but I haven't sat down and done actual tests on what my stride yeah. is versus somebody okay. else. On the VFO <laughs> website, uh, there was a um, the guy named Wallace who came out before, uh, I think it was after he died or before, but his relatives came out and said that he was the guy who hoaxed the, the footprints, right? Ray Wallace. Well, he, he didn't hoax the Patterson prints. Right. He, he hoaxed the prints that um, Patterson and Gimlin went to go investigate. Okay. Right. The reason they went to Bluff Creek was to investigate prints left by Ray Wallace. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, that that's another thing on the Patterson Gimlin film. Why did they go to Bluff, Bluff Creek? Because of a hoax. They went there because of a hoax and found an actual Bigfoot. But, Sean, the Wallace guy, he faked his footprints supposedly with carved wooden feet. And if you look at the prints that he left, anybody with a shred of tracking skill, <laughs> should be able to identify that those tracks he left. I mean, there's no, they're all exactly the same. There's there's no, nothing dynamic about it. I mean, if you look at an actual footprint of a person, you know, your, your toes play out, they bend, they slide, there's, there's different things happening there. And you don't get that with a set of uh, wooden feet. Well, you can find yeah. those, tr those yeah. prints in a lot of uh, articles and things like that, maybe even in Meldrum's book. Um, one of the heels of one of his feet had a crack in it, and you can see pictures, you know, taken by you know Dandin and whoever, all these old guys back in the '60s, and you, you know they're all casting these prints, and it's got that crack in it from that that, that print. Because I mean, it was made of wood. Yeah. <laughs> okay, funny. um, I got a question from the room. Okay. Go ahead. Um, Billy Green asks, um, are you all investigating any new sightings, footprints other than Bigfoot? situations and etc. You mean other than Bigfoot, like other unknown animals? Um, he didn't say, but... Okay, well... Yeah, the first... Yeah, I asked him to clarify, and that's what... That's, um, <laughs> we were, that's a clear question. We were just really, we were really excited to get our first question on the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what it is. We've got several asking. sightings lined up that people have contacted us about. I'm really excited. I've got the number of a couple people in Maine that we're going to contact that have had some sightings, and there's not that many sightings in Maine. And then I've had uh, another sighting that we're going to look into that came from down around the Carolinas, and what was interesting about that is the uh, description of the creature is almost identical to what the guy in the Alavet Gash described, and the physical reaction that they had afterwards is almost identical, so we'll have that probably in a yeah. couple weeks. I, I also got some stuff that I'm investigating here in Florida uh, in the Everglades. Uh, some people got in contact with me, uh, and uh, as soon as I possibly can get out there, I'm hoping to see maybe next weekend. I'm going to go talk to them. Um, they said they saw certain things. I don't know if there's any footprints yet. Uh, I, uh, I plan to go out there and, and, and look around the area to see if I find anything. But uh, that's going to be actually uh, the first one I'm going to do here. Uh, 
uh, in the Everglades uh, when I get out there. Uh, Yay, Everglades! <laughs> you know what? Yep. I'm actually oh, you're also going to go invest tree knocking in Maine. A guy told me about historical tree knocking. We've been invited to go. It's down east. We've been invited to go down there and, and camp out. And, you know, we're going to go and investigate the area. Supposedly, throughout the years, they camped there. And he, you know, remembers hearing this wood knocking in the woods. And they just always thought it was somebody playing a joke on him. But he said over the years, it was pretty consistent that they would hear this quite frequently. So we're going to go look into that. Excellent. Um, Voodoo, let me ask you real quick. Um, you've always, um, I guess you would like to believe, but you haven't found anything that really has convinced you. You've done, you've gone out in the field a little bit. Um, but if you had to pick a lot, uh, well, in I don't know, if, I, I know he's been in the field a lot, but I didn't know if, in regards to this particular, he topic. lives in piles of leaves, <laughs> <laughs> but if you had to pick, if you had to pick one, uh, piece of compelling evidence that makes you go, yeah, this is something we should look into. Uh, from a hard-nosed skeptic like yourself, what is it? The only, the only thing that really keeps me looking into Bigfoot is the reports. Okay, it is hard to dismiss all of the eyewitness accounts because you know there's. Sure. I mean, I know people that tell me they've seen it, and it's hard for me to look at them and say, you know, you're wrong. But recently, I came across something that kind of changed my opinion on that. Uh, during World War I, there was uh, quite a few reports of German aircraft flying over Montana. World War I. 100% of those sightings were wrong. Everybody who reported seeing enemy aircraft flying over Montana were wrong. 100% of the witnesses. What would they see? I have no idea. It wasn't a German aircraft. During World War I? Yeah. <laughs> Strange. So how does that pertain to people seeing Sasquatch? They were 100% wrong. Why couldn't the people saying they see Sasquatch be 100% wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, see, his, I see where you're kind of going with this, and, and I, I, I agree with you on, on one part of it, that, you know, like I said earlier, we're, we're designed for patent recognition, and, and it's a known fact that, like, if you or I, Voodoo, we were to go and do something – because of our past experiences, we would both probably have a different perception of that event, but the event still occurs. So, I mean, if somebody, I mean, what you're saying is it wasn't a bomber, but they, they maybe they saw another airplane. I mean, it wasn't how a complete How many airplanes are flying around during World War One? What's that? You got to remember what, what we're talking about in World War One. Oh, sorry about that. We're talking about, we're talking about biplanes still being made out of balsa wood. Right. And things like that. This, they're, they're not common. Was, can I, what did they report? They, they actually had to go send an investigator. I believe it was the state's attorney, or I'd have to look real fast. Hey, guys. Actually had to send out an investigator to go see if there was an enemy base out there because there were so many reports. What, were, these, these were, were these reports, Voodoo, were, was it a group sighting or was it spread out over a long no, period? No, it was just spread out. It was uh -huh. spread out, individual. Uh -huh. And then same as kind of like the McCarthy area, people were also accusing their neighbors of being Germans and, and right, you know, right, right. spies and things like that. Yeah, but I don't think you can compare that to the people that, I mean, you, you, you just said that, you know, people tell you, and, and I'm having people, you know, almost on a daily basis now, tell me things. And, and I mean, they're given a lot of details, you know, behaviors, and these things are consistent. If these people were hallucinating, I don't think that they would be reporting such similarities. I mean, I think they would have vastly different you know, they'd be reporting these things having two heads, having being their purple, well, they're riding we, invisible. We do have a dog head reporting from Min what isn't that the Minnesota dog man or something? <laughs> oh, you remember the strange sounds oh. video I did? The which one? The strange sounds in the sky. Yes. Okay. I had so many people email me and message me telling me, Hey, we heard this in our town, exactly the same thing. Everybody heard it. I call up the city hall or the police department or the local radio station, news station, and they're like, We have no idea what this person's talking about. These people will both face lie to me and t give me great detail about what they heard or what you know saw. You know, I investigated all kinds of things besides Bigfoot. Ghosts, but those you know, people are it. trying to hoax us, Voodoo. Right. I but know their purpose is trying to hoax us. But they're do not the people making the videos. I'm talking about just plain people contacting me. Same what they do they with Bigfoot sightings, noise. ghost sightings, anything like that. And I, it's the same thing over and over again. But every time I've investigated their claim, they've been lying. They lied to me in my face. Hold on, hold on a second. Hey, Sean, you're gonna have to put your phone on mute, bro. It's uh, it's cutting into everyone's conversation. 
Okay, uh, it's back now. Okay. Oh wow. What, what I was, Sean, what I was saying was, uh, your 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 calls keep cutting in and out of uh, everyone's conversations. If you could like, do me a favor, just put your phone on or your your line on mute, uh, during, during the other sections. I'm sorry about that, man. It's it's just it's cutting it's cutting into everyone. Okay. Who do I just? I'm back. Okay. I don't know if you heard me or not. All right. Well, I know you've been in the you were in the military and. Like in the military, you have reconnaissance, so you send people forward and you get, you know, you have them come back with their eyewitness reports. I mean, we place a lot of, you know, substance on what right. eyewitness, it's, even in a court of law. Right. It's one thing for you to come to me and tell me you had lunch at McDonald's. Okay. That's mm -hmm. believable. I can understand that. But it's another thing for you to come to me and tell me you had lunch at McDonald's and a spacecraft landed in the parking lot and Elvis got out <laughs> and came and ordered a Big Mac. Now, you tell me yeah. that. Now we got an extraordinary case. So even in the military, if I got to go out and do you know reconnaissance, and I recall you know I call them back and say, hey, we got eight you know enemy wearing such and such uniform using such and such equipment. That's not uncommon. It's not extraordinary. You know, if I tell them, hey, we got a whole army of aliens out here, then they got reason to think you know I might not be. But sometimes you know, extraordinary things are true. I know. Sometimes I mean, you're are. absolutely right. Well, can, can I put a can I say a point there that also right. another factor is that also what people are seeing is being repeated. In other words, people are, are describing a, a very particular animal with very particular details. So if, it was, if this was something that was made up, but some people, you know, uh, you know, made up or people are, 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 are hoaxing it, well, some people say, well, no, you know, we know the public. Got a, is about got a question here. Okay. Um, <laughs> am I interrupting you, Damon? Cut us off. Yeah, Cut damn, us off. dude. <laughs> well, hold, hey, hold on the subject. Hey, man, I'm, I'm really excited about these questions. So um, you guys gonna have to hold. Um, <laughs> All right, fire away. Uh, All right, go ahead. Ol What's the question, Sean? Olin, Let's have it. Fire away. Olin Slot, Olin Slot says, "What about the Sasquatch being basically a worldwide phenomenon before internet and mass communication?" Well, there's more than one species, obviously. I mean, Rosa in contact with a guy that's studying the uh, orang pentake, you know, which I think there's a high probability. I mean, look at the lion killer. The giant chimp that I think uh, good all somebody over there, some people are studying. They've just recently got a little bit of footage of the thing. I mean, that was considered to be, you know, something fanciful. And and I talked to people in Venezuela that, you know, saw these bipedal chimps. A mycologist did. Right. You know, maybe North America is probably one of the toughest places to <laughs> prove the existence of a primate. But I'm pretty convinced. I'd say darn near, you know, 99% convinced that there are undiscovered primates in the jungles. I mean, we are still discovering new new species all the right. time. And and we've if, whether big or small, we've discovered new ones in rec recent times. We, right. we discovered new types of gorillas, new types of chimpanzees, little guys, little monkeys in Madagascar. We've you may speak, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Which brings me to something yeah. else. If I hear one more person say. Well, I mean, we just found pandas 100 years ago, and we just found out about gorillas. Listen, show me where the 50 years' worth of hoax videos and things were for gorillas and pandas and things like that before you bring anybody brings up that argument. I mean, there's good arguments for both sides. There's bad arguments that skeptics make, and hey, that um, is one of the a, worst arguments that people make is, there's a, there's well, we just found, you know, such and such. You know, Go ahead, so, Um what about pandas and everything? They just found a new panda. Yeah, he was just, dude. He was just talking <laughs> about right. that, bro. You just cut him off. Can I him now? <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I'm Sean. You. Hey, all right, bro. Are there any other questions from the website? Any from the chat room? Anything we need to address? No. Voodoo, you know oh. the thing is okay. that you're right about the gorillas and the pandas, and I, and I said to somebody, what I found interesting is out of all of these. You know, reports of unknown primates around the world. I'm only aware in North American Canada of, you know, these things being reported to be telepathic or invisible or able to levitate things. You know, I think that you're right. One of the things that's confusing this is issue is there's so much BS that's, that's just accepted that it's thrown out there. No one really is critically looking at it. I still think. You know, there are footprints, there are these solid reports, it seems to me that there's something happening, but I just don't think that they're under every rock and leaf like, you know, 
<laughs> Finding there's a, there's there's a the tremendous belief. amount of bad evidence floating around. I don't around. disagree with that. That at people all. I don't disagree. That people take seriously. Yeah. And honestly, a huge undertaking needs to, you know, filter through all of it and throw probably 99% of it away right. and start but over. Do you think okay, any of it is valid, Budu? Do you think any of the evidence is valid? Any of the eyewitness reports are good? Any of the footprints are real? It's possible. Mm -hmm. It's possible. There's a okay. there's a problem, you know, in in this country specifically where we give a lot of attentions. We have we have organizations like Fox News and the National Enquirer that we give a lot of attention in this country to things that are just not true. And so it opens up a floodgate for hoaxing. You had mentioned a why it doesn't anybody. You know, you'd be hard pressed to find a Chinese citizen that is going to pull off a, a hoax who's not going to worry about going and doing serious time or even being executed in China for pulling off <laughs> right. a, a Chinese China wildman hoax. Um, you know, it's just not going to happen. But I, do, I mean, I agree with you. I think 99% of the evidence that we look at is not valid. Um, there's a very, very compelling one to two percent that makes us leave the gate open. You know, because there, there's a small number of of things that are very hard to fo hoax. I'm not saying it's impossible, but whatever the case is, what you said about the sincerity of eyewitness accounts cannot be overlooked and and that has proven species in the past in other areas exactly. not to a great degree right. not to a great degree but it has so but every time we go looking for something like the mountain gorilla mm -hmm. the panda any of those things they've been found right whenever we listen to the locals and they say look there's something over there when we go look there it is right except for big right and that's what and the yeti yeah well, well, I, I think I think one thing though that that that's, that's happened through the years too is that you know people you know that have been in organizations that have to do with UFOs and and ghosts and other things. I think you know it's become a media a medium that you know people are intermixing uh, all these different subjects with one another, and then eventually you know down the road, uh, you know it was you know people lost track yeah. and they just. Brought, you know, Bigfoot with UFO, right. I, I Bigfoot think with ghosts. One of my favorite, and, one of my, and, and it combined to something bigger. I, and for whatever reason, I, I, I've been trying to understand that too because uh, I, I've, I've been researching that. Uh, not only have I been looking at Bigfoot, but I've been looking at how uh, Bigfoot has been uh, affected by right. media, mm -hmm. film, and, and that's other what things. I was going to say. Out of all your, mm -hmm. out of all your stuff, Damien, I think that your your work in in the effect of media on Bigfoot is. Mm -hmm. is it's probably your one of your best articles. Um, what I also like to say is like that's what makes this open to the crazies is because people have a hard time separating <laughs> Bigfoot from unicorns and fire breathing dragons. It 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 goes in the same category. So you're gonna get these crazy believers who want to believe that everything magical is true, and then you're gonna get a lot of resistance from normal people who just don't want to be associated with looking into anything that has to do with unicorns, you know? Yeah. It creates a, well, it cre well, it's a, it's a phenomena to say the least. It is. Yeah. But people well, are reporting unicorns. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're not getting a lot of reports of unicorns. We are getting a lot of reports of, of hairy hominids. And not only are we getting the reports, and we're getting reports from police and, you know, <laughs> oh, I agree. Uh, hunters. I, I mean, agree. We, really, we got really police chasing UFOs too, though. Right. Yeah. Well, well, I'm just we, saying. We gotta keep well, the mind thing on. is, I, 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 don't, I mean, the thing is, I would argue that uh, life on planet Earth, everywhere we look here, we find life. I would think we would extrapolate that, and you could be pretty safe to say that you know the whole universe is probably swarming with life, or it's a gigantic waste of space. Mm -hmm. Well, I would agree I find that it difficult the to chances with all life in the universe, the chances of there being life elsewhere in the universe, is vastly greater, in my opinion. Then they're being a Sasquatch on this. Yeah, that's just math. That's just math. <laughs> that's just you know? that's plain and simple. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but we're talking yeah. about get you know trying to separate the crazies from you know what we can you know um, yeah. actually take seriously. Um, there's a lot of parallels that can be dr with, drawn with uh, religion. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you take a group of people and you just ask them a simple question? Do you believe in Bigfoot? Yes or no? Raise your hand. All right, so you can have one side that says yes and one side that says no. And you can actually draw a theist, non-theist comparison between those two groups because in that group of believers, you're going to have the people who, you know, believe, you know, they might have seen something or, you know, there's this big hairy hominid out there. Then you're going to have people that think he, you know, lands in a UFO. Then you're going to have people that think that he you know, transdimensionally shifts in and out of existence. 
you know, all these people are going to be mixed up in the same group, and they don't all believe the same thing. And right. they all actually believe things that are contradictory to each other. But since they all believe in Bigfoot, they're all kind of, okay, we're all on the same team. You know, let's <laughs> stick out the good yeah. fight. You know, yeah. it's us against the atheists. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of one of them. Things. Team. And well, so those people need to, like, you know, identify there, who's there's who a lot, over there. There, so we know who we're there's talking. people that you have to get these people to say, and it's not going to happen, but what, you know, can we just talk about what we know? And people are just going to people are just going to create all kinds of garbage. It's like there is there is zero observation, documented observation. So there are zero known behaviors. Okay, there everything is just hearsay and speculation. Everything, everything until you know there is actual documented study that we we tan, tangible study. I'm not saying that the stuff that people are doing now is, is not real. That's not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying you know public, tangible study that we can get our hands on. Don't try and sell us, uh, uh, you know, behavior on, on something that we can't verify. You know, it's, it, it drives me batty. <laughs> well, well, you know. Well, you're talking about, about the habituators that will claim, you Let know, Damien habitu- talk. What's that? Let Damien <laughs> talk. He's been trying to say something for what five minutes. He- <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, and you guys, you guys went on a tangent, a great tangent there, but what I was trying to say before you guys went into that tangent is, that uh, you know, it, there is documented information about a hairy key, a creature being described in many books. If you go to the rel- the relative uh, hominid paper uh, that uh, Dr. Northern wrote, uh, the uh, there uh, with a, with another Russian uh, uh, Russians that were involved in it, um, they do speak of books, of articles, of uh, stories related uh, by authors uh, showing, and specifically in the medieval times. Uh, of these uh, hairy, uh, or if you want to call them uh, uh, primal people that were being captured and were trying to convert them to teach them how to talk, and they weren't able well, to do that. Yeah, uh, no, some, you can't, you can't uh, wait, back wait. any of those stories up, Damien. Well, and I understand that, but unfortunately, we got to keep in mind that the past, people uh, did not investigate things like we consider it now. So if we, it, it, and, I, and I'm not trying to defend, you know, the, the, the story. Well, but Damien, let's say but, that you but, had but, a big foot. And it well, died. Yeah, but 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 if, but if we're going to talk about that, the reality of the difference of time of what is now and what and was back then, it's two different times. People lived in in a mythical uh, place, and if, I mean, if, if, for not, example, just answer one question to me: If you they these people, these same people they're talking about, you go into their castles. There's mm-hmm. stags, there's moose, there's mm-hmm. even Irish elk, which they dug out of bogs that they stuck mm-hmm. on their walls of their castle. Now you're telling me that they had these things in cages, and every story I've read, the thing has died. And they just bury the body. Where are well, the stars? Well, I, well, Where are the I, I, well, I couldn't tell you. And you're right. You know, we know we don't have proof, but they're just but stories. It, There's nothing well, to back well, them up. I don't well, well, you, well, we we could say it's stories, and they are probably a lot of them are stories. But what I'm what, what is trying to relate is something that was being uh, depicted not only by one author. We're talking about several authors from different areas. I mean, the, you know, they they had no communication with each other. There there was no way for that author to know. What that other author was writing, you know what I'm saying? We don't know but that. we really don't know if they were actually yeah. talking about the same thing or not, or if well, we're well, well or, or the if descriptions we're actually are very make, similar. They, they, they can they, talk about werewolves too. We've got people that talk fire. about you know Bigfoot in the Bible. No, well, well, okay. well, and I understand that, but what I'm trying to tell you is that people were that people were describing something very similar. Right. That were in different and so were the people ge- in the Bible. Well, and I understand that, but I'm talking about geographically. How you know how could people? describe a very similar animal that had nothing to do with each other. They were hundreds, you know, thousands of miles away from each other. And that's what I'm saying. There's something there that needs to be looked at. Yeah, but we can't assume it's fact. It's not a coincidence. We can't assume it's fact. That's what you said. You said behavior. Hold on. Our our guest is trying to say something. Dragons. How many different cultures, you know, separated over, you know, how many thousands of miles had dragon myths? Well, that that is correct. I mean, there's... we. If, you know, if yeah, but that doesn't, water, that doesn't help my fucking argument at all. That doesn't help my fucking argument at all, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> What's your I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but, 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 hey, but, 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 but in a serious, in a serious note, though, you know, uh, even, even, you know, you, you were mentioning the werewolf, werewolf legends. I mean, you know, I wrote an article about that, about, you know, that people could be confusing, uh, maybe saw Bigfoot and do the fact of the, of the myths and the legends of the time. They, they, they confused Bigfoot to be something that it wasn't. You know, they mis, uh, mis, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, showed it to be uh, uh, something magical, right. that it was well, something more than what it was. And maybe this creature was, was being seen 
but people were calling it werewolf, right. a monster, a troll, whatever you want to call it. And, and it's, it's fascinating to see. We, we'll, we'll never know. Right. I, I mean, naturally, yeah, there's no proof to okay, call it. Okay, hold on a second, guys. Sean, you had something for us. Yeah, there's a question here. Um, this one's about the New Hampshire sound recor recording near Conway. Has anybody heard of I that? I think um, uh, our is guest is very experienced with, with mm -hmm. sound recordings. Yeah, you, don't, you haven't heard of that one, Voodoo? No, I haven't. I'm I'm in the middle of a ghost investigation. I haven't done anything big for <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Ghost investigation. Yeah. I hit everything. Is there anything? You know, is yeah. there anything to elaborate on, uh, Sean, about that about that particular piece of news? Well, um, hmm, this one is. Uh, I don't think I've heard of this one before. I don't because mm -hmm. I remember everything I write about. Right. And, I don't remember writing about this. So, <laughs> you, sorry, you post sorry, with, Alice Gar forty eight. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's up, Alice Gar? He's a he's an avid follower. Sends us quite a few messages. Um, yeah, okay. All right. Well, you know what? I going back to hominids through history. One thing I can say that is fact is that up until recently, there have always been multiple types of hominids on the planet. You know, in different. Uh, in different pl places. I mean, just 10,000 years ago, they discovered this. I don't know if it's a species yet. They haven't said that this red deer cave people, but we also know that Homo floresiensis was also walking side by side with us. Um, and that's just that's just two others. I, I, who knows? You know, historically, there has always been multiple hominids on this planet. That's not a, that doesn't make it that doesn't make it, uh, you know, a definite. I'm just saying there's a little some cool historical Fact, <laughs> if anything, I don't know. <laughs> and we do have there, lots of footprints. But if if they're hom relic hominids, I mean, there goes things like the red eyes, uh -huh. infra infrasound radiation. They admit, mm -hmm. you know. I don't. I'm, yeah, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bite off. Anything <clears throat> you know, on mid tarsal that. break gone. Yeah. You know, when, yeah, but not we, all the footprints. Buddha, did you see the footprints that Damien found from the guy in Russia? Did I send those to mm -hmm. you yet? I've I seen there was a video. I haven't watched the video. I mean, those it's are really like good-looking tracks. Mm -hmm. Bare feet. I mean, they don't have a mid-tarsal break. They're not even in a line. They're staggered like a like a human would be, but they're walking barefoot in the, in the snow. And I mean, oh, who the hell does they're that? They're obviously fake, then. Yeah. They're obviously <laughs> fake? <laughs> he hasn't even seen them. <laughs> he knows if they're, they're, if fake. they're not walking in a straight line and they don't have a mid-tarsal break... So it's fake. <laughs> no, but Voodoo, I had a guy send me... Uh, some tracks that were in mud and his boot was next to him and these tracks were much bigger than his boot I mean they looked incredible and you could tell by the way when it came out of the mud that the thing had the foot had flexed because the mud had sucked in around the foot I mean these weren't made in my opinion by by you know wooden feet and and the, and the, the guy that sent me the photos you know he, he's well known in the community and I think he has a high level of integrity I don't think he faked them so I think he found these things out in the pucker brush you know, it's possible until and, and this is my whole opinion on footprints. I really don't care about footprints. Mm -hmm. I really why don't. is that? Unless they lead somewhere or to something. We lost your audio. We lost your audio for a second, Voodoo. Mine? Yeah, you, you're back now. It sounds like because because the footprints never lead lead anywhere or to anything, and so we just end up with footprints that sit in a well, shell. On a related, you know, in Meldrum's lab. On a related question. Um, you, both you and and Michael are are experienced trackers and uh, accomplished mm -hmm. trackers. What would you tell? Because a lot of people are out there taking pictures of footprints, and you don't, even though you don't like them, what would you tell them to do to properly document it for someone to take a print seriously? Uh, they can keep doing what they're doing. There's, there are people that are going to take them seriously. I'm personally not interested mm -hmm. in them. I, you know, I want to know where them tracks are going. You know. Right. It's almost like uh, you know somebody take you know showing up with an anonymous video on the internet. Right. You know, if there's nothing else to go along with it, it's just something okay. on the screen. We don't. Know uh, we is. have we have another question from another uh, another listener. Sean, take it away. Oh, okay. This one is from uh, Hollinsalot again, and he goes, "Where are all the fake feet and hoaxers? Who are they?" Oh, that's that's any yeah. asshole with free time. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> but I disagree with you, Voodoo. I think that footprints. I think, I think we should be casting footprints. I think people should be measuring them, documenting them, because the thing is, if these creatures are real, you would expect to be able to identify the same individuals over time. I mean, biologists do that with like leopards or any rare animal. We'll go in there and we'll cast prints. I mean, we that's data, right. that, hard data that we collect. And what, what have we found out in forty some odd years now? 
of casting that, footprints. What have we found out in forty some odd years of casting these footprints? That we're dealing that, uh, with how many? That's, that's we're dealing with either. how many? How many different species are we dealing with now? Because all because the, the tracks can't be from the same species. No, they definitely can't. Right. And not they can't. Well, at least the, you know we've learned that uh, there's probably at least a dozen of them. They're invisible and they fly around in flying saucers. <laughs> and, the, and the people do, in fact. Oh, and stuff. they hang out in caves by, made by the aliens. And they live in caves <laughs> and make tea. <laughs> and we know Don't for a fact people one. hoax footprints. No, that's that's not, that, we're not questioning that, sir. We're not definitely. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. just saying that I just have yeah. a low regard for people saying, "Hey, I found a right, footprint." Right. Right. Okay. Another question. Uh, another really, question from our our audience. Okay. Okay. So this is um. This is the same. This is the same thing I brought up last time, and this is from the same guy. Um, he, this is for Voodoo. He goes, "How do you explain the long strides uh, with stilts? How do you how do you plan on doing that? You were going to hoax the footprint of tracks. You have any ideas? Uh, well, I know how the Wallace did it. Oh, is, it, I mean, is, everybody, is everybody familiar with that? Uh, he had well, the, um, the handheld, okay. right? Yeah, he just had a robot tied to the back of a truck going slowly, and then when they, you know, there's video of how they did it, and they just kind of leap, you know, letting this truck kind of, you know, use, uh, make their momentum. But that's how they track did it. The, the, the track, the, you know, the track you saw, way you saw going down the road, the one that, Michael, you were talking about earlier. So if we see it, right. if we see also, it, that's how they did that. If we see a trackway well, with know, tire tracks. Well, these tracks off in the pucker brush where no trucks are at. That's true. How would they and fit it and what's the scale? I mean, uh, look at that latest Facebook find Bigfoot where they tracked a Bigfoot for how do, long, and you, and you look at the tracks and they're like this from, far apart. Do not quote anything They're real, man. Show. <laughs> oh, no, they're Bigfoot real. Bigfoot find Bigfoot's <laughs> real, man. They're, yeah, they're, they're real. real deal, dude. dude no, the, the, I mean, I look at stuff the like given that. theory was amazing. You got to love that given theory. I always love that theory of the given. <laughs> I, the tiger was wow. the best thing in the video. I actually think, Voodoo, if, uh, if I took a screenshot of you right now, uh, fi Facebook finding Bigfoot, Guys will find that you are a hoaxer who is actually hiding a Bigfoot in your background. Yeah. <laughs> in that chair. In that shadow. See, I, 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 I see it in the shadow. See shadow. You're riding a zebra. Yeah. You've got, I know you've got one. back there. Farting rainbows. Zebra. Look. <laughs> That's zebra. Uh, Wombat. Good times, man. Good times. That's a, that's a question for. Right. Um, cool. Go ahead, sir. Okay, this one, Robert Mitchell. Um, he goes. What new main reports have you investigated? Um, you mentioned some on Facebook. Can you talk about anything yet, Michael? Well, we've got the the main one that we investigated was the Allagash report, and I've had, as I told you, the guy reported in the area of tree knocking, and I haven't been in contact with this other person, but I have a number of a person that supposedly saw an adult female and a juvenile cross the road near the Union River down in Ellsworth. And supposedly these animals went from a bipedal to a quadpedal position and then back to a bipedal again. In other words, they, they switched off. And usually bears will stand up and go to a quadpedal and, and they take off. They don't go back to walking upright. And supposedly the person uh, is a woodsman, seen a lot of bear, and is you know completely convinced that these were not bears. So well, you know what? That's going to be our next one. That we're what, looking what's, into interest, from what's interesting to me when you say knuckle walking, you know, most, you know, People very it's very sexy in media to say that Gigantopithecus is Bigfoot. But what people don't realize is that Gigantopithecus, I mean, other than Dr. Meldrum, who has a kind of a, a stretch of a theory, and Dr. Grover Krantz, who was radical, I mean, most people agree that Gigantopithecus is a knuckle walker, you know. So I've never really heard that many reports of, of nu a knuckle walker um, in, in the Bigfoot world, but I think... If we're if in the Pacific Northwest, where they're saying th these guys exist and they're a descendant of Gigantopithecus, we should be hearing more of that, you know. Well, my friend Michael Phillips is in Colorado. He's reported seeing a Sasquatch that also went off quadrupedally. Mm, interesting. So people do people do report it. Right. How about you, Damien? You ha you've you've written. Uh, yeah, yeah. People have reported. It. I mean, uh, is there many stories that? Uh, he actually got uh, on all his four extremities and took off, and and we're talking about huge speed uh, when it took off. So, mm -hmm. uh, which which is very uh, typical of, of uh, apes when you see them, they they can uh, run pretty fast on all fours. Yeah. So it's just amazing to hear that from a creature supposedly real close to what people think is uh, to a human. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Anyways, that's just some interesting. Uh, interesting things. Sean has another question. They're coming in fast and furious. 
Oh yeah, I can't keep up with them. Okay, um, just pick the ones you like. This one, <laughs> just pick the ones you like. This one is um, by Jim Fournette. Okay. He goes, "What about the video from the police cruiser?" Uh oh, oh Damien. We're gonna wait for you. To... We're gonna wait for you. You gotta to turn off out. your ring. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What about Georgia? the video from the police cruiser? These when people are Georgia? trained to actually, yeah. These people are trained to actually notice things. It just looked like well, something. Sure got something across to say the road. Yeah. No, all I gotta say is that's Blob Squatch. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, yeah. there's something there. I don't know where it is. You can't tell. I, 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 I thought at first it was a man in a ghillie suit. That's what I thought. And I thought that somebody implicated that, uh, suggested that the officer might have been in on that. Oh, really? But they set that up. Really? And then he had yeah, the. Well, I think they didn't. They yeah, did but doesn't that officer work? Which, uh, like, hold on a second. Doesn't that officer work for Beefro? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, hold on a second. I know hey, they, Sean, they, am they, I wrong that, on that? They, did, did that police officer work for Beefro afterwards? He, he became mm. part of it? Yeah, I saw him on South oh, Park. Maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure about that, Damon. I don't, I don't, I, I, for whatever pay. reason, I, I just I I don't know why, but I think I saw that somewhere. Mm-hmm. That same officer reported that he became part of. If I'm wrong, you know, somebody could clear it up. I don't know, but if anybody out there knows, please uh, clarify. Well, that we've for discovered us. that you can lose your job at, on the police force if you promote hoaxes. Really? You mean like <laughs> yeah? You know, put a ask Rick Tire. You know. <laughs> yeah, a video like that that is so bad that you re- can't really you you have to try. Like, Try to make it be a Bigfoot. You know, I don't have time to even bother with that. I, I well, know. How do you feel about? I mean, I kind of agree with you that you know the the idea of Bigfoot being in North America, that's that's a tough sell. I mean, I think there's something to it. But what about the rest of the world? What about you know the orang pentake or you know reports I mean, the, of the orang pentake? You know, if it's like a orangutan type, you know, close orangutan relative or something like that, yeah, it's highly plausible. You know, not just probable, but, you know, highly plausible. Um, you know, but when we're talking about Bigfoot, yeah, it's possible in North America, but is it probable or plausible? And, you know, that's when the scales start, you know, becoming vastly, uh, you know, uh, to either end of the extreme. What about the what about this, would, d- these new theories then um, of another? It's not so much a, a primate in the traditional sense, but but an actual offshoot of the homo genus. How does anybody feel about that? It's possible, once again, but then again, it also <clears throat> debunks most of the Bigfoot evidence that's been brought right. forward. Mm-hmm. You know, I, just just saying that. Yeah, I, I always go back to the to Madagascar. For you know, I'm fascinated by Madagascar and the way uh, the uh, you know the the lemurs over there have have uh, adapted and mutated through the uh, through the years, uh, and and it's amazing to see how much ad- different adaptations uh, have happened and how different one. Uh, lemur has adapted from another, uh, and 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 in that, you know, you know, could it be possible that in 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 our evolution, uh, you know, of of, hom- of 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 humans and hominoids or whatever you want to call them, something did branch off on its own and became something else? Is possible? Uh, you know, if we look at at Madagascar, certain lemurs became something else. You know, they they were able to eat certain fruits that others couldn't. Uh, you know, and, and they were, you know, not too far and away I from think, each other. I think, I think Voodoo agrees with you on that. I think what Voodoo yeah. is saying is, is, is like, that's great, but we just don't have any evidence that he buys. He's not buying well, well, any well, of no, that. And, and I'm not, I wasn't yeah. trying to, 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 I was just making it as a right. point that, you know, he was saying that it's possible, but, but, but the thing is I'm saying we have something that we can look at that is actually right. we're now not, we're not that, talking that happened, about. you know. And, right. and if, if we're going to do something, if we're going to look at this animal, in a, as being a, a, a something that supposedly exists, then nature can show us something similar. If we look at Madagascar, how things have mutated and changed through their evolution. Mm-hmm. Right. You're talking about lemurs. Yeah. It's not like, you know, in Madagascar, this group of lemurs, you know, kind of evolved a little bit away from the other group of lemurs, and now they're gorillas. Right. Well, well yeah. <laughs> but That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, so, well, well I, and I understand that, but but I mean, but what else can we compare it to? I mean, if, if we can talk about gorillas, is a gorilla is a gorilla? I mean, no, that's exactly but, what we. But, but what I'm talking about, do we have a group know, of lemurs when, that mutated when into gorillas? Change, in an evolution, they became a, an anomaly, right. you know, and that's what happened with lemurs. Certain anomalies happened that made them a little bit different from one from each other, and even totally different from one from another. So I'm just saying, I'm just coloring that with a possible existence of a closely related animal to a human or something that could, it, it, that could be imitating a human. What about that? What about if Bigfoot is not really 
it, it's something that's imitating a relation to a human, you know? So it's just, I'm just saying, we don't know. Well, you know, we're, we're trying to make um, comparisons here. And it'd be like if we compared us to, say, you know, Neanderthal, okay? And that's pretty close. You know, it's a little bit of an offshoot, mm -hmm. things like that. But going from us to Sasquatch is a gigantic leap. Yeah. Okay, it's not like a little ad adaptation here and there kind of made a few small changes. You know, we got something, you know, gig you know, huge, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> With just, extreme speed, extreme yeah, power. Really um, Sean, uh, Sean uh, had one more question. Night vision. <laughs> okay, Mr. Evidence. Yeah, this this might be unrelated to uh, what you guys talking okay. about now. It's okay. Let's move on. Let's keep okay, trucking so, through this. Yeah. Okay. Um, why doesn't any serious biologist take these claims seriously? Isn't that problematic for big supporters? Well, I think we have a serious biologist, a on, serious the, biologist on the panel right, right here. here. <laughs> I'm taking with it a, serious. With a handlebar mustache. <laughs> I think there's something to this. I agree on a lot of points that Voodoo makes. This is highly, you know, it's extremely unlikely that there's a giant undiscovery. And we've got, like you said, 50 years, no body, no real good evidence. But I've seen these footprints. And so we've got footprints and eyewitness reports. And I'm going to investigate it. I can't ignore it. These people seem very sincere. The footprints are, are really interesting. I would like you know to get some cast, get out there, and actually get my hands on some of them. But, here's here's uh, a possible a here's a possible you know scenario, a hypothesis, if you will, as and that I like it. It's been presented to me. And in, in, when when certain animals go feral, they actually change in their appearance. And I would imagine that um, if if an offshoot of society that just said you know, him, uh, mountain men in the Appalachians just said, "Screw it, we can't work it. We can't do this. We're, we're we have a family. we we have a little community in the woods. We're gonna avoid people. They become after several generations, extremely unkept. They may have they may be bigger, just a little bit bigger than everybody else. You know, a person can a person. You know, you get dreaded hair. You get you know, can a person adapt and maybe possibly? No, you're both shaking your heads. <laughs> I'm telling well, you, man. All three of us. Cool. Look at the Patterson Gilman right. film. All right, people are going to claim that's a, you know that's a Sasquatch. That's a feral human. Yeah. Come no, on. no, no. I'm not. not gonna, that's not going. That's not. Gonna no, I'm not saying that that is a feral. I'm. I'm just wondering, like the. Well, I mean, I'm just saying right. this is the best evidence yeah. that's being brought forward, mm -hmm. and we're like, and we have to look at the evidence, right. and we have to say, okay, let's look at feral human thing. Let's compare it to the evidence we're being presented with. No. Right. right. I mean, that's, there was that Indian that came out of California. Uh, I don't know. Right, but he, nobody thought he was Bigfoot. Yeah. No. Well, no, but the thing is, I don't think that, that civilized people are going to revert to a feral state. But, I mean, it is – we do have an indigenous people, you know, in jungles and stuff. And there was that Indian that survived for, I don't know, 50 years hiding out. You know, so, I mean, you might find a Stone Age people that remain Stone Age, but I don't think you're going to find it in North right. America. You can find them, even if you did find them in North America, you know, they're not going to, for some odd reason, grow to eight feet tall and start right. growing hair in places where other primates don't grow hair. What is, um, no. what is the story um, with, uh, with the Loveland Caves fossil finds and, and that, which were, which were just human beings. They were just bigger than everybody else. Oh, you're talking about out in the Midwest, especially the, in the Nevada, giants that they In have. Nevada, the, yeah. they found a couple of skulls. Um, and I don't think they were disputed as hoaxes. They were just really big. What do you think of that, Voodoo? I, I, I don't know the exact story. I'd have to ask Ken Federer. Okay. <laughs> well, I've heard the story. The supposedly supposed the story. Was <laughs> I take that, it you know who he is. <laughs> that they uh, started a fire and smothered these guys, right? right? They were red-haired giants, and they were fighting with the Indians, and the Indians finally cornered them. And then they told some people where it was, and supposedly they recovered these skeletons. But, I mean, I haven't seen the skeletons, yeah. and I don't know if, if that's been verified. Has I, it, right? I don't – From it's so hard to say yes to that because what I've dug up on the Internet would say so. But, you know, I don't trust anything I find on, on the Internet 100%. Super Soylent has looked into the stuff of, of you know, giants, and he doesn't seem to okay. think that there's very much – Evidence yeah, I don't know a whole that. lot of people um, that support it, and I, I, I'm, but I'm very curious about it. Yeah. Well, a lot of the photos that have been shown, like of giant skeletons, are photos that were, you know, uh, made up, photoshopped. Oh yeah, those are know. those are hoax. I'm talking yeah. about the actual yeah. uh, fossils. Well, well, you know, but I'm just saying that a lot of people, you know, a lot of people talk about that, and and I see people talk about that. Oh, one guy even sent me one time a photo, and I, said, and I told, hey, guy, this is this was proven to be a fake right. photo. You know, it's, it's not a real photo. Yeah. 
of, uh, Magellan of the Giants. Magellan reported Giants, Damien. Huh? Well, that's, that's Magellan reported Giants at the tip of... Uh, oh, oh yeah, that, that was the story we were talking about uh, before we got online uh, about uh, Indians, uh, these Indian tribes that were huge people of eight foot tall. Uh, and um, they, came, they Yeah, and they encountered them. Uh, I think they were doing a, a walk. They were trying to uh, cross the... Uh, through the the side of the Pacific Ocean, I'm not sure the story. I can't remember exactly, but they met well, up. They lived at the tip of T- El Terror, Terror yeah. El de Fuego, or whatever the tip of oh, South yeah. America. Yeah. And Magellan, I guess, was six two, and he said that which he was tall for his time, and he said that he could stand when they put their arm out, his head wouldn't even touch their arm. Wow. Of their well, there head. there's an one account um, written by Buffalo Bill. Get know who he is? Yeah. Yes. Buffalo Bill, uh, William William Cody, aka <laughs> Buffalo Bill. Um, in his account, you know, during one of his scouting missions, he wrote this. He goes, while we were in the sand hills scouting the Niobrara country, <laughs> <Good attempt. laughs> the Pawnee Indians brought into camp some very large bones, one of which the surgeon of the expedition pronounced to be the thigh bone of a human being. The Indians claimed that the bones they had found were those of a person belonging to a race of people who a long time ago lived in this country. That there were once a race of men on earth whose size was about three times that of an ordinary man, and they were so swift and so powerful and, and powerful that they could run alongside of a buffalo and taking the animal in one arm could tear off a leg and eat the meat as they walked. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, uh, Michael, what was the period, the geological period... Um, about 90,000, I, I don't know if it's technically not a geological period, but 90,000 years ago, the extinction uh, of, of larger creatures uh, other than Homo sapien, um, what, what is that called? I think it was about 90,000. No, I don't think it was oh. that long ago. You mean the, when the megafauna went extinct? Yes. Oh, it start, I think it starts with an E. I, I forget it right okay. offhand. But... What, is that, what is that called, that, that, that extinction? L-M. I can't remember offhand. Yeah. I think it starts with an E, but supposedly that's the idea that you know, uh, humans came over here, and there was a whole bunch of this megafauna, and in the space of what, you know, five, ten thousand uh-huh. years or something, we wiped ninety percent of them right. out. Right. We ate. We ate them. <laughs> yeah, we did. Uh, we ate them. I've got a question here for Voodoo. Right. Um, have you seen the London Trackway yet? The London, I've seen, Oregon. I've seen pictures of it. He's just not interested. Uh, what, in it. <laughs> 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 did, did the light track, Sean. Not interested. <laughs> Did they find yeah, a I, I don't like the tracks. On, um, on that uh, particular subject, sorry to cut you off, Damien, um, Tom Powell and, and um, um, Guy, Ed- Guy Edwards, I should say, has promised to bring Tom Powell on the show to talk about that, and I know Michael is very interested awesome. in that subject. I am. I'm a big fan of tracks. Yeah. Man, <laughs> it, they say a lot. Even though we don't like them. <laughs> they say a lot. Well, here's, here's why, I, going back, why I brought up this whole feral thing. These people are seeing something, and if it, I'm not talking about a population, I'm just talking about a few, you know, a few crazy guys out there. Could they be seeing some feral guy with big feet, you know, leaving these sliding tracks? I don't know, you know, covered in animal fur because he's been living out there. And that'd have to be a breeding population, right? No, that's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about a breeding population. I'm just talking about one guy who said, "Fuck it," left society. I mean, there's a million things that these people could have been seeing, and they stuff. wouldn't have fur. Right, right. They wouldn't be. They wouldn't be nine feet tall. They wouldn't have be have all these muscles. They wouldn't exhibit, you know, chimpanzee uh-huh. behavior. They wouldn't exhibit. Glowing I mean, red they, eyes. Well, the 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 primate behavior is is incredible in your sightings. The ones that you pursue. I'm just talking about, you know, people getting things mixed up and maybe seeing something that they thought they saw, which would account. I I'm going to say accounts for ninety percent of them. Anyways, I'm just I'm looking for anything to explain this phenomena on any level. You know. Black bears, eighty. Not let's write off fifty percent. Voodoo, tell tell him about your uh, Bigfoot sighting. Oh, you want me to tell the story? Yeah, yeah. All tell, right. tell, I had tell a, I had a Bigfoot sighting. Bigfoot sighting. This happened when I was about nineteen, maybe twenty. Um, I was working third shift. I was a security guard at a in another town, and I had to ride my motorcycle from one town to the next to get to work. Along the way, there's a ninety degree right hand turn, and on a motorcycle. You know, your headlight will shine into the ditch on the other side of the road if you're going around a turn, not in the ditch on the side of the road next to you, you know, if you're in America. 
Um, so as I was going through this turn, there was something large and hairy standing next to me on the side of the road. I went right past it, and it freaked me out. I mean, I was, well, holy crap, I saw a Bigfoot, you know, and I, you know, <laughs> continued on down the road. And, uh, you know, and it, it just started, you know, I, I got to the point where I wanted to go back because I wanted to see it again. And I figured, I'm on a motorcycle, I can outrun it. You know, if it comes after me, I can get away. <laughs> so I turned the bike around, went back, and I'm like going slow, you know, zigzagging, you know, shining my light all over the place trying to figure, figure out what it was. And right about the same spot where I saw it, there was a bear standing on the side of the road. Yeah. And, uh, and I would have swore up, and if I would have continued on to work, I would have told everybody I saw a Bigfoot, mm -hmm. you know, had I not turned around and gone back. Right. So that, that's as close as I've ever come to seeing a big. Okay, thing. we have some. She's seen several other bears, though. Yeah. <laughs> I told the guys about the the story about the bear who stood on two legs when it attacked my dad and then turned around. Um, wow. The um, uh, the viewers have something directed exact specifically towards Voodoo. What is it, Sean? Um, Jim Bonnet says there have been very few remains of black bears found. So that could this explain why we can't find big bones? I found black bears. Michael, have you found bears? I've 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 have found a black bear that died in the woods. The only cougar, the only mountain lion I have ever seen in the wild was dead, and it died of natural causes. Mm -hmm. I mean that that argument is does not work. Well, that well, that's because they um they can't bury each other. <laughs> they bury each other. Dog dog can they bury, can't bury each other. <laughs> You know what I think's happened? If, if if Sasquatch is a real thing, which I am leaning in that direction just based on footprints and eyewitness reports, right. it's probably extremely rare. And even though Voodoo and I both have run across these critters in the woods, for the most part, when something dies in the woods, it doesn't stick around very long. It gets eaten. It gets eaten. I mean, it, yeah, it just dissolves mm -hmm. yeah. right into the ground. Yeah, scavengers come and take it out. Right. Yeah, well, when it's, it's adult, rare. It's rare to find anything yes. dead out there. It's like a bird. Yeah, when we were when we were doing military exercises, you know, when we find a bone or something, people would, you know, it was very rare. I mean, I, I could tell you, in, in twelve years, I think I've saw maybe I think I saw a uh, a bone from a from a deer uh, in my twelve years, only in a, a, a small piece. Mm -hmm. And deer <laughs> are really common. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In my in my in my twelve years, I, I that's the only time I ever saw one time. I saw a bone of a deer. The guy told me, "Hey, this is a bone of a deer." Yeah, I found a lot of dead deer. Mm -hmm. Not many, but not many bear. Only one mountain lion. Never, never a wolverine. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things exactly. That we just so don't if find. Sasquatch was really rare, it would probably be extremely unlikely you're going to find a dead one. And chances are, if the thing gets ready to die, a lot of critters will go and dig uh -huh. into a pile of crud. Or who knows? Maybe Sasquatch goes to a cave to die. <laughs> that the, that he said that because of me because I love caves. No, no, no. He, <laughs> he goes to his subterranean cemetery. <laughs> they like to be at Kong. As soon as one dies, the others come come drag it off so we don't get to scavenge. Well, well, well there's a story related about that that supposedly Bigfoots do uh, have a burial rites and they set up like these little uh, uh, like in a... I think the story was related that it was in a tree trunk that they placed yeah, a dead it. Bigfoot and they put like these little ritual uh, things but made rare, just, like from animals. And then, for whatever reason, the guy who saw the it, it, he saw it, and he he came back later. The Bigfoots took it away when he went to, back to see where what it was there. There was nothing there. So it's, you know, it's a lot of stories, different things that happen in uh, in the legends of the Bigfoot. fantastical, the fantastical Bigfoot legends. And, and once again, we're left with nothing. <laughs> you know, well, so it, 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 I mean, I'm, I'm as excited yeah. about that story yeah. as I am about Justin Smedja well, shoot one. But there you go. It's At the shit. end, you know. the guy didn't find anything. Yeah. That's typically what happens in these stories. You know, that's like we do have you know, and we have eyewitness reports. Was that voodoo? Well, like the the uh, Sierra Kills shooting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same no, thing as when right. that go, when that was like the big news. I was, you know, I asked the same question. Uh, yeah. What's his excuse going to be as to why you don't have oh, the gun? He shot. He shot. He's he shot two black kids in the woods and then hid the bodies. Is what happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Something. Yeah. But every time yeah. you hear about a shooting or something, somebody finds a habituation site or a grave site or anything like that, the next question out of my mouth is, "What is their excuse as to why they don't have the body?" Because yeah. there's always one. It, you know, nobody ever comes. Nobody with any well, of these stories ever comes back. Watches you know? have a timeline for for them revealing themselves to us. And I'm not just asking for a body from big. There's no communication with them. You know, because people are asking, where's the body? Where's the body? You know, you know. Yeah. I don't think we're just going to find a dead yeah. Sasquatch in the middle of place. Well, it's somebody says some here, uh, yeah. uh, Olin, Olin Salat. i got to figure out how to say his name. Olin he Salat. goes, 
<laughs> he goes, could cannibalism explain no bodies being found and low population numbers? Primates are known to got cut off. I don't think you need even need to go that yeah. far. Voodoo is a yeah scavenger can take care of. Voodoo is agreeing with uh, Voodoo is on the side of the Bigfoot uh, community on this one in that you, it's just not it's just not likely that you're gonna find remains. Period. You know. Right. I mean, try to find remains of a dead chimp in the Congo. I challenge anybody exactly. out there to do that. I mean, I mean all chimps are known to hunt each other down and eat, eat each other. <laughs> all kinds of chimps are right, Michael. There are all kinds of critters that are going to eat that body. All kinds of critters are going to eat it. They're going to take well, a piece the of it. I mean, they, they could eat their own body, but the problem with that is that would assume that there's never an individual Sasquatch that dies mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. you no. Know? And it's more likely if Sasquatch is dying rather than its own kind eating it. You don't, like Buddha said, you don't need that. You kill something, put it in the woods, the mice, the rodents, the fungus, the birds, it just disappears. Mushrooms. Very quickly. If I yeah. went to the SPCA and, and got a dog and shot it and took it out in the woods and just left the body there, It'd be gone in a matter of yeah. no time. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 think. I might actually do a video. I'll, I'll try to see. Don't uh, shoot your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Poor I'll, yuppie. I'll just make it an example. Poor yuppie. <laughs> oh man, what we Poor need is if you take like a time lapse of of something dead, yeah. and you will see the insects. Pri well, that's what usually takes care of stuff is not large, you know, things scavenging, but insects. Mm. So. On a different subject, as uh, uh, as we uh, come to a close here, I would let this go on and on and on, gentlemen, but I have a, uh, a prior engagement that I need to attend. I want to ask uh, Voodoo what he's got going on. You had mentioned an upcoming uh, ghost expedition. Uh, yeah, there's a, <laughs> Is this a debunking? location here near me. Not necessarily. I I'm not out to debunk even ghosts or Bigfoot mm -hmm. or anything like that. You know, If people say this stuff is real, I want to know about it. I want right. to see it. So there is a place that is purported to be haunted. If you do a search for it on the Internet, it's called the Poor House Road Tunnel mm -hmm. in Virginia. And you will see nothing but reports from paranormal sites, you know, that have gone out and seen ghosts and all kinds of stuff out there. So I'll be going out there and spending the night and recording the whole thing on night vision and everything. And I'll see if I see anything. Awesome. Anybody. Sounds like fun. All right. So keep us both. myself. Mr. Sean. Alone. <laughs> Because I'm a bad man. <laughs> Mr. Sean Evidence has been ru has been running the uh, chat room. Uh, anything you want to wrap up with, Sean? Anything from our viewers? Hmm. Um, no, not really. I think uh, we had a lot of fun here in the chat okay, room. Okay, good, good. All right, well, that does it for yet another. And, well, we went long. We did go long. We're at uh, an hour, almost an hour and 15 minutes here. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, for watching Extinct the podcast, my co-host as usual, the the Woo! charismatic, the fabulous Mr. Michael Merchant, the uh, always interesting, always fantastical Damian Bravo, our newsman Mr. Sean Evidence on the on the chat room floor, doing it up, cutting the ones and twos. I'm Ro Sahibi from the BigfootReport.com. We've been having a blast. Thank you, everyone. Please go to iTunes. Subscribe. And thank you, Voodoo. Yes, and I was getting to that. Um, Voodoo, where can we find you <laughs> online? Where can people find you? Oh, I thought you were going to ask for my house address. Uh, <laughs> that's up to you. There's a lot of crazy people here. I know you're. No, I'm uh, mainly just on YouTube. Uh, YouTube user Voodoo Six V Zero Zero D Zero Zero S I X X X X X Triple X. Ooh, provocative. All right, gentlemen, I've had a blast. I wish this could go on. I know we were on a roll, but I have to get out of here. So I am on my way to go gather some uh, interviews for, for our websites some. and uh, do some fun stuff. Thank you, everyone. We are Team Taser Bigfoot. This is Extinct, the podcast. We will talk to everyone very, very soon. Hey, let's go to a, uh, a closing title screen here. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Bye. Look at that. Bye-bye, everyone. See ya. Night. Night.